last time. Yeah. I feel kind of distant from my one last time this year. What the? Duh. <laughs> yeah. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Elk Season Podcast, episode 34. 34. We are the Chambers Brothers. My name is Harold. I'm David. And today on the Elk Season Podcast. This is the last one of the last podcast of season one, episode 34. We're going to do a sort of a year in review, have a few more headlines for you, and anything else that sort of falls out of our bantering, uh, blubbering mouth. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it should be a good episode. And, and there'll hopefully, be a lot. Hopefully some yeah. good things to uh, to look forward in the coming year. Yeah. And there's one <laughs> there's one item I forgot. Oh. Uh, so and and that is This an is item like an early Christmas gift. We it is because I <laughs> I made you watch a video last week of a grizzly bear attack. Yes. I mean not on a human. No. A grizzly bear hunting. Sorry. Correct. Not an attack. It was a hunting. It's very yeah. different. Well, we've talked a lot about, you know, grizzly bears yeah. and, and, and yeah. their uh, hunting skills. So you've had a week and and that has marinated. And after our discussion, our my discussion is marinated to to a uh, to a different understanding. Sorry, go ahead. What what? I don't know. I'm I'm laughing because <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> I know we probably talked about it, but I'm drawing a blank. The the grizzly bear who <laughs> who was hunting the caribou. Oh, go okay. ahead. Thank by, you. By yes. obviously scent. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. And it and it you no grizzly bear would chase just a caribou scent that ferociously. It it was in it was intense and it, it was it was all smell. It like had to be. It, it had to be. Everything about that trajectory of that bear was was scent because look. As a human being is concerned, we use our eyes more than we use our other senses. Yeah. And so we'll see an animal across from us and we'll use a pathway to go over there, but we kind of try to follow that straight direct line as best as possible. Right. The bear, I mean, you you anthropomorphize automatically so much to our animal friends. You go, well, they would just do the same thing we would do. And the bear defies your logic as you're watching. It's like the caribou is clearly at an angle to this thing. Why doesn't it just cut over? It's in the water. How does it not see it? Yeah. Because that's not the the sensory modality that it's using. Right. That's not the... And uh, right. It, and and it, it just it blew my mind when the bear goes through the water. The caribou is parallel to it. Yeah. It gets out of the Moving water. Moving in the opposite direction. Yeah. yeah. And it gets out of the water and it literally just follows the same path that the caribou felt. Yeah. Felt. And it just... It goes to show all of the things that, that I've witnessed in, in the wilderness... The nose is everything. That is a for fascinating animals. video. Yeah. That is a fascinating video. You go back to some of our earlier yeah. podcasts, that's some of the key moments we've talked about is when we were scented. Oh, it's always and, bad. And what's interesting is... Oh, I had a... I, this year, you want to talk about year in review, baby. Oh, when I got scented and this big bull wheeled around and he was leading two other big bulls right to a water hole where yep. I took a shot the day before. Yeah. Where the just t- wheeled that, I mean, at 75 yards away. That, st- ah. that story I talked about being at 30 yards away. Yeah. At 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And the thing had no idea I was there. The wind just barely, nothing hardly. Yeah. But it... it it flared its nostrils straight in front of it. So it's, you know, yeah. it can see to its side. But what's interesting is it's it looks forward, but then it looks literally just straight at me. It's almost like it knew the source of the smell. Yeah. And so seeing the bear, because you, know, you said marinate. Yeah, now that I remember, sorry, <laughs> yes, there were moments of marination. Right, right. And I I just think about those situations that yeah. they... they and and that's not the the only time I've come across these kinds of data points. Uh, I, I talked about one of the last days in my the first time hunting in the zone we tend to go. Uh, my last day, I was ten yards down or up from a, a cow in in the trees. Yeah, and she she looked up at me and I was covered in camel, but she she couldn't figure it out with her eyes, so she was going to figure it out with her nose. She flared her nostrils and was gone. Yeah, uh, but other hunters that I've I've come across and I can't remember their names. Um, not hunters in the field, but like people with videos and, and things like that. And maybe it was, maybe it was Roe. Chris, was it Chris Roe? Okay. Maybe it was him who talked about, you know, the one, two, three of how they're using their senses, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He does have a very, 
Very that that is yeah one of his paid lessons. Yeah, and it, so I don't even know if it's a paid one, but I just that that has always you know so it's just another one of those moments. And and elk aren't right. the only animals that do that. Is what that bear video right highlights. Right. So animals will will use their eyes, but they'll trust their nose. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. And I told you I saw a very similar attack uh, of wolves on bison in Canada. Okay. And the the similarity was this for some reason the alpha male targeted a completely different animal. Just like the whole squad seems to be on this page and this one guy goes, "Changing the rules, I'm going this way." And just his data his data set, you know, I just he just knew and there was this huge, huge bull and was so much further away, but he could just tell. I, and I don't know if there was something in the wind on, on him or if there's something in his body language, but whatever it is, that wolf said, no, this is the bison that's going down today. And he didn't yeah. even, he hardly ran and put up a fight. It was so crazy to see that. And when you see, when you see this caribou die yeah, and you're like, wow, that it's like, it didn't try to get away. Like it couldn't get away. It was almost like it knew it had been had. Yeah. Maybe and maybe it had attacked. Maybe it had attacked it before. Yeah. And it got up and ran off. Possible. So so so, so anyways, there's so much there. There was a it was a neat video and understanding understanding how much so your how, how important it, your it, scent is. And and that's the thing. As as we're having this conversation, I go, have I I've I've tried to put more emphasis on my scent. And you know, I've, I bought bottles of scent blocker yeah, and all that stuff, and yeah. I've, I've tried it, you know, and I, I had this, but but it's those kinds of things that make me go, maybe I need to get back on that bandwagon because I just haven't done anything about it. Yeah. Uh, but the other the other thing is, I haven't had a lack of success. I've had a lack of harvest. Right. I yeah. had a lack of harvest, not a lack of success uh, of getting close to these animals. And so, to me, I think I still think there might be an overemphasis on scent. I still think it's important not to sweat too much, yeah, and and things like that. But to to kind of, I don't know, does, because of the way that I've had my success again, haven't harvested. But that to me, that's not what success means. Harvest is the uh, it's the end of your season, man. Right, kind of a bummer. <laughs> it, that's the benefit. Of, yeah. of having success yeah. hunting. Hunting is, according to Idaho, it, hunting is just simply the pursuit of animals. Right. It's not the harvest. Harvest yeah. is the the benefit of the animals you're allowed to to go hunting. Yeah. So I I consider myself a very successful hunter, horrible harvester. Uh, <laughs> so far, so far, it's, I'm not I'm not worried at all, man. You'll get you'll get them you'll get them like two three years in a row, and you'll be like, man, we got this. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're ninety. Drought. Your ninety percent fail rate or whatever, I, which be, is you know, seven, I'll be seventy years old and like well, hey, I'll be at right. the camp and my but, boys will be up on the hills. Yeah, but you'll be up to eighty five percent failure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> so it'd be so much better. Yeah, it'd be so much better. But anyway, it's just scent. Scent plays a role in what ways? What, what's the most strategic? What, what I always want to think about what's efficient. So yeah. what's the most efficient thing for me to do? Where do I need to focus on the scent thing? So one of the things that I have done, and I, I don't use it uh, 100% of the time, but I do use a, a deodorant, a, yeah. a no-scent deodorant to hopefully block some of the sweat sure. and stuff like that. So I, that's yeah, about... There's nothing, there's nothing you can do to stop you from stinking. Right. But there's a lot you can do to stop you from stinking so much. Yeah. And so minimizing scent... Um, and so, so some of the, some of the tricks I do, um, when I, when I, I always bring extra socks and extra shirts, yeah. I leave them hanging up. I leave them hanging out. I know it doesn't get rid of all the scent, but it helps, it helps really dry them out Yeah, and, and get rid of a lot of the scent. Um, and, and you know, even though on the fourth day, you know, when that big bull wheeled, when he smelled me at 75 yards, man, that was the, that was our fourth day in, I think. Yeah. Right. That would have been, hey, we're packing that guy out tomorrow because we got to go home. I mean, it was. I think it was Sunday night. Maybe it was Sunday yeah. night, Friday. Anyway, well, it was. But we'd been in there a while. Yeah. Yeah, we were ripe. <laughs> yeah. So, so the smell thing is 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 a two parter for me, because there's there's you know we we can eliminate it, but we need to minimize it. We minimize it by the type of clothing that we use, and 
the, you know, the fitness that our body's in and the speed at which we move. Yeah. And the other part is understanding the wind. Yeah. Because you can, you can smell as little as you can. And if the wind isn't right, it's not going to matter. Correct. And you could be stank. So, you could be straight up stank, and if the wind's in your favor, baby, you can get in there. And the most efficient thing then would be to have a combination of those things. Yes, with the important, yes. with the, I think uh, the um, the underscore being understand the wind. Yeah, because oh yeah, because that's how. I mean, I I wasn't using any scent blockers that I can remember when I got within thirty yards of that bull at two thirty three o'clock in the afternoon. He walked right up to me. Yeah, I just failed to misunderstand <laughs> how to pull the string back on my bow with the wrong muscle group. Yeah. Uh, but he was there and I had 20 minutes with this thing wow. before he smelled me because wow. the wind was just in my favor. Now I wasn't, yeah, it, it, there was just no wind. And so I, I just automatically kind of go, well, this is in my favor. And I was just dressed to the hilt in camo and I just looked like a bush that was sitting down. So, yeah. um, <laughs> that's dead God, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm conjuring up the memories of this experience. It was quite a situation to watch him just come right up and just slowly graze right in front of me. And then he was up the hill and, and less when than, was this? This was We got a lot of we got a lot of elk stories. When was this? This this was the first day. Um or this is the first day of the second year that I was hunting alone in oh, where, okay. where we go. Okay, up elk. So Ridge it area. was it was opening day. Oh, okay. And I, the the previous year yeah, I had you a, had opportunities both years in the same yeah. place. Man. And this was a nice five by five. He had small. It was a dr- very, very drought uh, stricken year. Yeah. And so antlers were just small up there. Yeah. Uh, that year. And this guy was just a neat little five by five. But one again, I, wa- I I saw him from above and I just made my way down to the. the now he had a, a friend with him, but they split up. Yeah. And he went to the little grassy area, and I thought maybe I was going to catch up with him on the knoll right above there from the opposite side from the previous year in the same like almost exact same okay. spot. Where okay. I had seen the okay. bulls the previous year. Okay, the kitchen. The, in the kitchen. Yeah. I was coming from the kitchen side yeah. versus the Morning Ridge side. Yeah. And so I'd seen them from the Morning Ridge side the previous year and got in on them. And oh, I was okay. 40, okay. Uh, 40 yards away from them on a stiff wind. So I understood nice. the wind that day. Yeah. And, and it it's, carried. Uh, those days are kind of nice because you know, you know what, to, what to predict. And, 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 I would have predicted though that the wind wouldn't have blocked my sneeze because I I actually have very sensitive eyes to the light. It was right. kind of bright, but it was breezy, a stiff cross breeze, and I sneezed at the top of this knoll, like literally one ridge over. Yeah, I'm I'm maybe sixty yards from where they're at, and I don't know that they're there. And then I then I ridge line myself. I'm completely up tall, and they're down yeah. there grazing in this grass. And then yeah. I I got down, got an arrow knocked, and I spent about 10, 15 minutes debating what I needed to do yeah. and they never knew I was there and it was it was ridiculous laughable really but yeah. inexperience you know happens the, the following year though on the opposite side I was just uh followed him down and I was just trying to traverse to to a similar position like the previous year just on the other side but before I got there I saw the antlers coming up over the wow. ridge so I saw him coming up and he's just kind of grazing and I was like oh so I was actually between cover which really sucked. Yeah. Because yeah, I just, yeah. I, you know, there are the antlers. It, it, you know, if I continue to try to push it, he's going to lift his head up and see movement and he's gone. So I just plopped down and sat cross legged and I had just had my bow the wrong way. I needed to not have it like this. I needed uh, to have it like this. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it was just a dumb. It's, it's, it is dumb so mistake. hard to know what to do when, when you're because surprised by elk. Yeah, and, and so I, there was this little uh, rock or or knob of, of uh, like a stump, and I go, I think that's about 30, 30 yards or so, and I go, if he comes and, and is, I go, it's one of those situations where you're like, I want the bull to do this, and when, right. when do they ever do that? Right. Well, he did it this day. Right. Right. They did it at the water hole this, and this last fall. Yeah. Unfortunately... That that was it. That, yeah, that. I didn't capitalize either. <laughs> anyway, so smell. That's where the yeah. thread started with yeah. smell. So. Yeah, and 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 the predator in the in the grizzly bear. Yeah, um, it, it's it's a great video. I'll make sure and, and have the link on YouTube. Not the and, link, but a, a description, so you just know what to type. And and think on of, YouTube. Think about smell and and Mother Nature. Uh, we can keep with these conversations, but think about grizzly bear and think about bears in general. And a tool that's more effective than a gun to to get those things away from you, 
huh. messes with their nose. Oh, geez, yeah. You and think I'm, you think pepper spray is difficult for you to handle? Yeah. Oh, geez. Have have uh, millions more olfactory receptors. Yeah, yeah. And I I know guys will say, yeah, yeah. It's just seasoning to bears. They don't care. You know, I think I think an optimal scenario to really help yeah. a bear stay afraid of man is you have the pepper spray, you use it, and as they as so, as soon as they start to become agitated to it, you fire a firearm, yeah, to make loud, obnoxious noise to really send the message home to them. You right. don't you don't fire at them. You just fire it into the ground, right? And that that right there scare them. Those two things, yeah, yeah. Just get them used. So to that they way. have they have little in in Canada. Jim Baird. I, I I watch a guy on YouTube called Jim Baird. Called his name is Jim Baird, and he's an adventurer. Nice. And he does these he does these canoe trips. He knows how to rig a canoe up to go down some wild rivers, and he goes down some wild rivers in the Yukon. Never and and ne- he never l- really pans gold. But this this last episode that he did, he actually panned some gold in the Yukon, and it's like one nugget the size of a fifty cent piece. The only thing he finds. Wow! But he's so deep, and it's all protected. You can't have, you can't commercially mine. Yeah, you can fly in, float down, and pan, but you cannot commercially mine. So there's there's nuggets like that available. Wow. Up there. Anyways, that was really cool. But uh, yeah, Jim Baird. Um, where was I going with this? <laughs> we we're talking about bear pepper spray. Yeah, uh, so noises. Canadians, the Canadians, they have flashbangs. Oh yeah. yeah. Not, not, I don't know if it's a flashbang. It's just a banger. Yeah. Right, and it like almost hangs on their zipper, on their coat or around their neck. And yeah. so if you see a bear, you just yank it, and it's like a gun going off. It's really loud and a very good deterrent. So between a pepper spray and a banger, yeah. And this guy, and when this guy, um. So I'm sure those are, those got to be available. Somewhere. And they got to be lighter to carry than a gun. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Jim Baird still carries a gun, but it's a 12 gauge shotgun. Okay. Right? And so every time he sets up camp, he's like, "Well, first thing I'm going to do is get the shotgun out and make sure that it's ready to go cuz bears will smell you." <laughs> yeah. And they they could come in and take a peek cuz they're not used to seeing you. But uh he's never really had any any uh serious encounters with bears that I've seen on YouTube. But uh, yeah, those bangers are really neat. Really neat. Just kind of on a lanyard. And, yeah. And it just pull and they make a big, big noise. It's kind of like these, but for grown ups. Yeah. These little but, booby traps. But for grizzly bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still trying to conjure up ways to. Every now and then. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Here's, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Let's set up a trail cam and those. Oh. Let's get the reaction of whatever deer or animal. <laughs> I, that, that's, that's so cool. I, that, does, that was not does, a good idea. Not a good idea. Uh, I guess fun in theory, but <laughs> cruel in reality. And it could start a fire. That, that is, is yeah, a, yeah, there's that. That's a possibility. Anyways, if it turns out, if it turns out, and and we don't start a fire, I'll make sure to publish the video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, so that's 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 the flashbangs. That's the grizzlies. Uh, I don't I don't think I had any grizzly bear talk in any of the points. No, that was a good any story stories. though. <laughs> Th- thanks. I like I really like Jim Baird. I really really like Jim Baird. He's uh, he's been on the show alone. Oh, I I thought I think that's where we've talked about him before. And uh, and he's helped out people on the show alone because he he really goes in. For 14, 15 days by himself. And he does all the camera gear, all the solar panels. He does all the portages. A modern day Les Stroud then. Yeah, yeah. So so Les Stroud, and I really like Les Stroud. I really, really like that guy. But Les Stroud learned a little too much from network television. Yeah. <laughs> and he really, he really lays it on thick. Could it be that Bigfoot is here? And watching me now. But that original and, Survivor Man series. Oh, yeah. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. It sparked. Less, I, it, in, I don't know if this is true, but in my mind, that's what sparked the whole survivalist uh, 
genre or at least he he his his show helped fuel other people to come on board now again i might not know the timelines yeah. but that's who i first saw was les stroud and then you have the bear grills then you have uh dual survival and then you have yeah. uh, naked and afraid naked and afraid and yeah 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 which have by a, the way i got accepted i'm gonna be on that show all right not really the so <laughs> so the um <laughs> So I think Joe Rogan actually credited. I, I listened to a podcast, Joe Rogan and Les Stroud, and credited him with inventing the selfie stick. Oh, right. Everybody wanted to film themselves, but you you just can't walk around all the time with your freaking hand this far yeah. out. So he kind of made a stick. Yeah. With it, and and there was so many years ago, yeah. nobody was like selfie stick. What are you talking about? No, Les Stroud is like the inventor of this like self filming stick. Because uh, maybe the was, selfie stick was there, but he used it in a novel way. Because selfie sticks seem like they've been around for a long time, but yeah. he was using it to actually do live. They filming. haven't. They haven't. Because because Les Stroud has been around longer than Facebook. Yeah, you think? I know. <laughs> Just I, that was a joke. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> he's been he's been he's been on YouTube. Okay. Before Facebook was a thing, before oh, people were even I guess I don't thinking know that about selfies. About him. Right, it was not. It's not selfie. So he was out there with the okay. selfie stick. Anyways, we don't. We can argue about that later. We can what? argue about that over but beers is... during elk season. It's fine. <laughs> so, but I. But I really like Les Stroud. Les Stroud <laughs> had an entire, uh, an entire. This the old man. Ah, psh, ah, psh, psh, Les Stroud psh. had an entire season of Bigfoot. Yeah. The whole thing, and I one year when we when we hunted out in fifty five. Yeah. I downloaded it on my phone. Okay. That's what I watched in a tree stand. Nice. <laughs> Cuz hunting wasn't, you know, on my agenda that day. Well, I'm just Dude, tree you, stands suck. <laughs> tree stands suck. I still have that tree stand. I may even use it again. Nice. But tree stands suck. Man. In the winter, yeah. It was it was so tough. It was nothing. It was nothing but sitting there trying to stay warm all day long. Constantly eating. Constantly yeah. cooking and yeah. or eating. Anyway, good times. We didn't even make it out to fifty five this year. No, <laughs> no. And we, I, I think our conversation last week uh, sort of was just like we got to get out and scout more. There's, it's a big, big area. Yeah, and we've yeah. we've only been in a tiny sliver of it for 10, 15 years. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. We we can really di- diversify um, where we're hunting out there, and we just need to get more hikes in. I, yeah. I, I personally, speaking for myself, I need to get more hikes in. Yeah. So the hike, the hike this fall. If you want to talk the year in review, I talk a lot about. Um, you know, I was in the gym the other day, and one of the guys, uh, one of the guys who's been hunting for I don't know forty years, never killed one with a with a bow. Yeah. Um, but has done with a rifle. He's been out elk hunt, out was elk hunting elk hunting this year with a rifle. But he says, "Oh man, he had horses." He's like, "Man, if you," and he's retired. Yeah. And he's like, oh, please, if you get something down, please tell me. Right? And it's, I just don't have the heart to say, buddy, I trained all year for this. Yeah. I want to earn. I want to earn it this way. I really, really do. Sure. And so, and, and so somebody was talking with talk, talking to me about the gym and uh, the gym owner. She's like, Hey, so yeah, tell me, you know, that was a probably a hard day. And I go, yeah, it was 32,999 steps or whatever it was. And, you know, everybody's eyes get big and you start to, you start to look back at the things you've done this year and that hike, yeah. I think I'm still sore. I think my knee <laughs> sure. and my hip yeah. are still sore from that hike and, uh, and I need to hike more. I mean, CrossFit's great and I'm strong and I try to stay fit. I need to I need to ease up on the forklifts, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, you know I need to hike more. I just need to hike more for long duration. Hiking is a different activity, man. That's my preferred exercise. It really is. It's always been mine. Hiking to the top of Mount Helena. Yeah, I used to do that. I used to do that before work. Wow. My my fastest time was twenty eight minutes. Nice, all the way to the top. But uh, that was ah so many years ago. But man. I remember how that got my heart pumping. Yeah. Holy jeez, nothing like nothing like being in elk country. Yep. That my heart just kaboom, kaboom. Because I I wonder if I 
was ever able to go back and hunt in Montana the way I hunt in Idaho. Just I just want to know what the difference is because the mountain terrain here is, it my, is just steeper. It's different. It is. It is. It is. However, gosh, I don't know, man. There's places in Montana for I, sure. You you remember you remember we we put a good stock on some elk. Yeah, in, in the deep snow. Yeah, that's steep country. Well, that was steep country, dude. Okay, you remember? Remember? I was Twelve. It was. It was. It was many. <laughs> it was many years later. Well, not many years later. It was, it was a. It was later when we took mountain bikes out there in the yeah. summertime and pushed them up that mountain. Yeah, just to ride them back yeah. down. Yeah, there's a picture. <laughs> there's pictures of us with That's that right. old dead tree somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was good stuff. But yeah, it was so. It was so steep. You push the bike up the hill and then press the brakes. And then use the bike's brakes to pull yourself yeah. up the hill. It was, it was a crazy. Cra- I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking sometimes. Hey, we, we had fun. <laughs> yeah, I think let's make a memory. That's an adventure. Yeah, that's hard to repeat. I, so it, it, it's supposed to be year interview, not life interview. But I want a caveat on that because <laughs> one of my favorite memories of hunting, and even that trip, I think we would take because we didn't have much money, didn't have much resources. But so when we'd go out, our day pack food consisted of. Oh yeah, a Mountain Dew and a Snickers bar, two actually, a two a piece. We shared both. We took we oh. took two breaks. Oh, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. We we split a Snickers and a Mountain Dew, and then we'd stop and yeah. split a Snickers and a yeah. Mountain Dew. And that right there is is wow. a memory for champions, right there. Yeah. How was I not bringing at least a <laughs> thermos of something hot? We we just not we first generation hunters, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, you learn a lot. You learn yeah. a lot. Now I know. I just, I just, I just, I do like to. I, I like like a hot beverage. Yeah. Nothing, and I've read a lot of books, and nothing, nothing will help your 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 internal temperature like hot sweet beverage. So hot sweet tea, hot cocoa, Alpine spice side, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. Have some coffee with some cream. Just as long as it's really warm, and as long as it's got some sugar in it, it'll get your. It'll really get yeah. you sweating and help you warm up, and so. That's the that's the approach we should take <laughs> when we're outdoors, and that's the one I I, I do take now. But yeah, you're right. Y- y- yeah. Life in review, boy, it was Whew. nothing but. I told you when even, I- <laughs> even on that cold day with the elk in the snow, I think we probably had Mountain Dew and Snickers. I'm sure we did. And and the I'm other sure we did the other that memory was all that would fit in my fanny pack. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the other memory of those days was was stopping at the uh, the town pump. Yeah, and getting and you don't have as much memory for this for whatever reason, but okay. we, you'd get a giant soda of Mountain Dew, like a big forty ounce. Yeah, but then you'd get those cream cheese bagels that we'd put in the microwave and they'd, yeah. they'd fill up with oh, air. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, I remember mm. those. I do remember those. That those was back in the day. The food we, that they put in the in the hot boxes at gas stations <laughs> back then. That's when they they actually made good food. In when hot boxes. you microwave a bagel that is wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Somehow the the chewy factor. <laughs> yeah. Just the steamed out of it. <laughs> it's just off the hook. It's just it was just fun. Yeah, this uh the town pump. Yeah, <laughs> man. So anyway, anyway, the year in review. <laughs> Went all the way back to nineteen ninety two, apparently. Well, you know. Ninety three, four, something. <sighs> I don't I don't even recall. So many so many things have changed in those, you know, 30 years. Yeah. So many things. And and you know, some of these things changed over this year, and we're going to be looking at some of the changes. I saw a uh sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't have anything. Oh. I thought you were like pointing to yourself. Like, hey, me, talk to me. So, <laughs> hey, what about over here? I'm just going to um, do that periodically to see. Okay, what, yeah. See anyway. if I'll actually stop talking. No. <laughs> no. It's a special moment when I stop. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to send a mixed <laughs> message. I don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about things that are going to change, and you were you had seen something even this year, something that was changing. It had something to do with change. Um, Pocket change? Changing, yeah. Changing this year, changing next year. <sighs> Lost it. Well, I think I think it's in our headlines when we get there. Okay, you know, um, so so some of the things that the podcast just talking about elk the the idea of the elk season podcast is that first of all, archery elk is the greatest outdoor sport in North America. The greatest. That's yeah. That's sort of an emphatic statement. 
that is just there just isn't anything. Um, and you can try to argue. You can try, <clears throat> but you'll fail. That's just nothing better. Anyway, yeah, and we've tried. We've tried uh, between us. We've tried to argue a few other things. <laughs> yeah, but um, but the, you know that idea is but. And, and it, it's also true that it has only a 10% success rate. It's a 90% yeah. fail. And I think part of, of being part, being someone who can, who can increase that, that percentage, um, that success rate, increase your success rate by thinking about elk all year long. Yeah, it just keeps your head in the game better. But I could have said that in like five minutes less. <laughs> but you, but you know what? We've got an hour to fill. Yeah, sure. So, uh, but I, I think for for me, your interview that certainly helped me stay more intentional. Be, you know, I think about the, the the day and a quarter that I actually had to hunt. <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason, yeah. I think it it has m- that much more meaning to me because of how involved I was all year. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too. It's, it, it, yeah. it's all cumulative yeah. in nature. And what a, like I, I, I sit here and I wonder how could I be so emphatic and excited about a day and a quarter where I ended up giving up because I just didn't have time. Like it was, yeah. but, but holy crap. I just, I, yeah. yeah, it does. There's something about the process. So hopefully well, not hopefully. I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to you know what what is this going to do on on the next rotation? It builds it builds anticipation. Uh, it helps me plan, yeah. right? It helps me helps me understand, get in shape. Um, I I definitely need to shoot my bow a lot more next year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to bring your arrows over. I was going to refletch them. By the way, oh, I, I maybe I should talk about that a little bit. So, yeah. So uh, this year. I'm looking at, and I don't know if I talked about this on other podcasts. I don't think we've come back to it because it was right before, right before we we're going to go out. I'm out. I actually went out shooting, and I, I recognize that I have one arrow that has fletchings that are not torn. Oh, one arrow with fletchings that are not torn. <laughs> and I, yeah. I'm like, I've got to do something about this. This, this is not good. But. The fletchings that I have on my my arrows are four inches long, or three inches, or something like that, right. three and a half, or something. They're they're, they're right. really long. Yeah. And we got those originally because we had uh, they weren't whisker biscuits, but they were whisker biscuit style, uh, whisker biscuit minus. Uh, and because the the previous fletchings they were like two and a quarter inch, they would rub on the inside of the circle of that thing, and it would cause them to not fly straight. And so once I recognized that, I started buying those with the, the they were shorter fletchings, but they were longer and it just went far. It just went straighter. It just, I saw an immediate improvement wow. and that was downtown here at the archery shop we have yeah. here in twin. And so that really opened my eyes to, Oh, I, there's so many little dynamics you got to pay attention to. Well, anyway, we've since gotten, gotten away from those types of arrow rests. We both have fall away now. Yeah. And fall away is just uh, why putting it off. Like in my head, I, I think of all the different arrow rests I've used, and I'm like, and I've heard fall away for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and so, and I've known people with fall aways, and they're like, do fall away until the next best thing comes along. So, and because fall away wasn't a thing for, yeah, right. And and <laughs> now there's a site that we both want that. Yeah. You know, anyway, yeah. Don't want to get into that now, but the the fletching thing was I have one arrow. I've got to fix this. And now I bought an, uh, an arrows. I think it's called an arrows and easy Fletcher. Okay. And there's two different types. There's one for long fletchings and there's one for short fletchings. Back in 2012, I bought the one for short fletchings because I started to do my own fletchings. And I I didn't really care for how things were turning out. I didn't like it. And that's why I ended up going to the guy downtown. And then as time has passed, I, I never got rid of that thing. I just had it, but I need to refletch, but I can't do the long fletchings. So literally before the season, I have to refletch my arrows with different types of fletchings. Two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch, I think is what they are. Okay. But they're taller. They're back to the ones that we had back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like... I well, remember shooting those and feeling like, wow, those group a lot tighter. Right? They just... The, the, well, you the, haven't shot my arrows. No, I've shot arrows with, with short fletchings. Though. Right. So, so I'm worried because if I've been shooting with these long fletchings... Granted, maybe not enough, maybe not as often as I should, but I know how they I know how the arrows are flying. 
So I refletch all my arrows and I have to get back out and have to shoot again. And to my amazement, my arrows went straighter than the previous fletching. And I was worried about them being off. So I actually felt like there was an improvement by going back to these, the style of fletching for whatever reason. Maybe it's their, their lower, higher profile with a shorter duration just causes them to come, come yeah. true quicker or something. Because it just, they don't seem as off like they used to be. Huh. So uh, I'm really, you know, and, and anytime you can learn to do something for yourself, I'm always a big yeah. fan of. And that's, yeah. I've, I've been horribly self-sufficient in life, mostly. Don't ask my wife about that, but. Uh, <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> for what it's worth, I'm self-sufficient. Right. For, yeah, I'm not self-made. <laughs> right. I'm just self-sufficient. There, that's a good yeah. way to put it. I mean, you So know. anyway, uh, I just... The the process is pretty straightforward, and I, I think I have it down now to where I can make it look pretty darn good. Yeah. And so I just need you to bring your arrows over. In fact, I even have a way to yeah. help to differentiate ours from each other so we don't get them mixed up. I bet the increased distance from the shaft adds leverage with the same square centimeter of air coverage, right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just because you say it comes truer quicker... If it's, you can put more. That's what it seems, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it, make, it makes sense. You know, if I was to hypothesize, which is all I'm doing, you know, you, you take the same amount of, same area, same same surface area, shorten it. It gets a little bit taller. It has it has a little yeah. bit more leverage. But it's not having anything it, to, to bind on like it did before. Right, so right. I, I don't know. I'm just really, really pleased with the, the process and the way that, cool. the, the, the you know, it's just a, I think it's Gorilla Glue. I, I haven't shot, I haven't shot, um, the short um, fletchings with a fall away rest. I just have my, you know, I've shot them before, yeah. but never and, with that fall away. And, and my Fletcher has a, a slight helix okay. to it. So it'll, it'll actually oh, yeah. just twist them just slightly Give as them well. Give them a spin? Yeah. Nice. And so, and and if I lose a fletching, coincidentally, uh, I think I, I had a, I, I shot an arrow and it knocked just one fletching off. Well, I can't reuse that. I can't re-glue that fletching, but I was able to prep the surface area and, and use my little fletcher to just put it right back on. Oh, nice! A new <laughs> one. So I don't know. I just I like the process. It takes okay. hardly. It doesn't take any time at all. I just you know it's a, a little bit. Yeah, of prep. I won't be shooting my bow for at least a couple of weeks. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just just food for thought. I just I don't. It's 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 been yeah. kind of a weird, fun process to to glue fletchings on my arrows and. Well, I think it's nice because I don't have to pay somebody to do it for me. And if I need something, I can be more yeah. selective and I don't have to, you know, I don't feel like I'm wasting anybody's taking, time. And... Taking any part in the process of elk season. Yeah. Just any way to deepen your involvement. That's where I've been, you know, right? Yeah. I said, let's, let's, let's do a podcast. So we're always watching elk stuff on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, may, so when we engage deeper and, and maybe I need to put together a quick clip video of, of doing an arrow. Yeah. 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 You should just, yeah. So we got a great, we got a great, we got a, we got a great YouTube channel. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't like to brag, but I don't know how many, what, 35 hours of content so far this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so not bad. Yeah, right? Add some other things to it. Yeah. yeah. So and there's things th to do in the future for, for next year. Looking to, I so let me tell you I'm thinking about I'm thinking about this I when I when I hike alone I I'm never alone <laughs> I have a phone yeah and I can talk to my phone right and it, it, it is almost as good as it's another person because I know that some other person is going to see that someday sure and then they never do yeah <laughs> right but it, it helps cure a lot of the loneliness yeah um because you know you just kind of out there in the woods you, you're alone it's like a little lonely just like to talk um and so i have all of this media yeah from the day i got my elk and the day i hiked it out yeah that i have not published okay i so much so much and i'm thinking about you know starting to release it on tiktok or you know just as you know it's all it's all it's all in the ratio of a phone yeah. Right. So it's not going to be. It's not going to be the uh, like a like a really great video, um, but on TikTok or something, and it tells a story. Yeah. It just it it really tells a story, and as 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 time goes by and I lose sight of actual details, <laughs> um, or I've embellished them. 
right? At <laughs> Way least, to go, Hollywood. At, at least, well, at least the phone, at least that phone is there to say, hey, this is what happened, buddy. This is the yeah. truth. This is the whole truth. This is nothing but the truth. So anyways, so I've been thinking about that, and I have, I just have a ton of stuff, even from... Even from the the sucky failure weekend of just hiking alone for no reason, I don't know what am I yeah. doing out here? What's out here? Don't see anything. Anyway, yeah. So so that's uh, that could be. I think that would be actually a nice uh, a good way to let the year go. And let's publish all of that. Put it all out on YouTube. So, anyways, I've been toying with that idea. Yeah. Just, we'll see. We'll see if it snows a lot and I'm stuck indoors again. <laughs> yeah. Just channel it out there, man. Yeah, yeah. Let the people have Are we ready to hit say. conservation news? Yeah, I just thought it might be a It's a, about a it's segue. about time. We got about we got about 15 minutes. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind of the year in review. The whole I the whole idea of of uh the elk season podcast is to think about elk season, archery elk all year long. To always be engaged in what can I be doing to make to make to maximize that little bit of time I get. Yeah. How can I maximize that little bit of time I get in the fall? And we want to be thinking about that all year long. And I think that was a good success this year. Yeah. But for me, I mean, I stayed on task. I thought about I thought about elk season more. I the podcast I, every, every I unfortunately week. couldn't get out except for <laughs> Labor Day weekend and then an hour and, or yeah. an hour <laughs> it felt like an hour. A day yeah. and a quarter. It just it was so limited later, but I, I I'm going to hopefully reorient the uh, the fall to have more time out there. So, uh wow this this Wood River Valley bull got taken out by what the heck is that a swing set? Uh yeah, a swing set or a clothesline or a you know yeah backyard item backyard items bull. Yeah. It's sad because it's it's there in the Wood River Valley, and I have fond memories of driving through when I worked for a siding company, well, yeah. a, a rain gutter company. We'd go up to catch them. They'd go up to catch them daily. Some yeah. of the some of the crew, and and when somebody wouldn't show up to work, they'd say, "Hey, you got to go with the crew today." So I'd go out of the shop and into the crew, and we'd go up north. And in the winter time, you'd pass by. Um, where was it? As you're getting closer. To catch them between Haley and Ketchum. Yeah, there's this mountainside. Right after fact, Albertsons. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So it's it's right, right before at, the, right after Haley. Yeah. Right before you get to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the intersection, the big intersection up there. Yes, there's okay. a light there now, and you'd come through there, and, and this is back when it used to be two lanes versus the freeway that they've yeah. made it into. Okay. And the elk would be coming down that hillside, yeah. and you're just camping out right there, and so. Uh, and we've seen the elk. You know, we've had to stop, stop, yep. stomp on our brakes a few times going up yep. to go hunting. Yep. So uh, it's sad, you know, but it is, you know, he, humans and, and nature are going to interact. You're going to have these unfortunate incidents. Uh, I would, I don't want an elk to die because of those kinds of things, those interactions. But yeah, it's a I'd, bummer. I'd it's rather, a bummer. you know, whatever that backyard item was, hopefully it was more useful than, say, a, a useless invasive species that is poisonous to the elk and they're attracted to eat it. Right. Like the Japanese you. <laughs> so yeah. I'd, I'd rather it be that if it's going to be anything uh, than something that could have been completely avoided. Because if that was like a clothesline, because I, I literally use it to hang my right. clothes out. Or a swing set or yeah. a trampoline. And if it, and if I if I look at the video and that elk was actually trying to swing on a swing set, I'm going to be a little disappointed. <laughs> like that wasn't made for you, fool. Yeah. We didn't actually get to the video. The elk snarl. We're not yet. Dang it. Okay, Dang it. So we forgot. That's that. Gosh, can't... it was so cool. The Rocky Mountain elk. Can you pull up anything else and listen to it while we're doing this? Um, I, let me see if I can find it here. If, if you put this Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, what is that elk sound or whatever that title of that is? You could pull it up. Let's see here. And maybe play it into your microphone, the sound of it. Because yeah. it's a. Elk sounds are crazy, crazy. I mean, they're really cool, and most of them are pretty predictable. Not predictable, but w understood. Right, right. We we know a lot of different chirps and whines and bugles and growls and and chuckles and different names for different things. But this, yeah, it's it's uh, this is an old iPad, so it's uh, it's thinking. Oh. Okay. Rocky Mountain, what is, what's with the snarl? There you go. 
please pull up a video. I hope I didn't pull up like a... Okay, yeah. It's pretty short. It's pretty short, and they get right to the snarl. So. Okay, I'm going to volumize yeah. this. We'll see if we can hear it. Huh. Have you heard that before? Huh? It's sorry. I'm trying. My brain is trying to understand what right? I did. So I watched the video while it made the noise. So the noise came through pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's almost. I feel like I've heard that before. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that kind of coincides with some of those other noises that I've heard that I, I wouldn't have thought were elk, you know, that, yeah. that kind of reminds me of something a horse would do. Yeah. But, but it's almost like it did that in response to seeing this camera, like it came over to investigate it and its nostrils flared as it got closer to the camera as right. if it recognized that this is something that I haven't seen before. And it had that reaction and its nostrils flared. So it's yeah. almost like it's having a reaction again. What is it thinking? Well, I think it's thinking <laughs> it's going to have coffee later. Um, yeah, I don't know, but that was, that was interesting. Yeah. I want to pay more attention in the woods next time I'm out there. Yeah. Like that. Cause I feel like I've heard that before. Yeah. That's an huh. interesting, that's an interesting elk sound. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I could spend the, the next 15 minutes, the rest of this podcast contemplating <laughs> that noise. I didn't know what to expect. I know. I know. Hmm. So we get a real reaction right here. Wow. Real David reaction to a, an elk sound. I know I've heard before, but I don't know if I've attributed it to an elk. Yeah. Wow. Huh? Because the, 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 the still frame on that, you would think the elk's not, you would think the elk's making a much more dramatic noise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he's a big, dramatic bull. Yeah. Anytime you see a big bull, you think, oh, the drama. Here comes the drama. Yeah. I mean, we had some drama yeah. our last day up there. <laughs> yeah. Some amazing drama. Yeah. Uh, 2023 Western hunting deadlines and tentative dates are here. So go hunt insider. What do you know about this application? This dates. is just go, just plan your hunt. We're just talking yeah. about 2023. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get ready. Look at your calendar. Set the dates aside. Make sure it's it's easy, easy, easy to get somebody to commit further down the road. Hey, can I get five days from you in September? If I could get, can I get you right now to commit? Or would I have to wait? Would you have to wait and see what your calendar looks like in the fall? Or if I said, hey, let's pick days. Let's pick days right now. You and me right now. Let's pick days. <sighs> Right? Could we do it? I don't know. I I <laughs> I have to wait till I get closer to yeah. the semester. Yeah. I unfortunately yeah. I, I'm a I'm a uh I'm a what I'm connected to my job in a way that I've gotta play that card intentionally. Not carefully, just intentionally. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. So unfortunately yeah. I have to wait until it's closer to game time, but that doesn't mean I can't be prepared for the game. I just have to wait till closer to game time to make some final calls on okay, okay. when the game will be played. Okay. See, and that's so much better. Like when we talk about outdoor sports, think about it. Football scheduled. Like yeah. we can be flexible. Yeah. Of course, it has to be during September. But. Well, and and part of the part of the deal is if we do get and we talk about scent in the very beginning of this podcast, when it comes time for an extended stay in the woods, we need an extended wardrobe. Yeah. Right. I need. There's only so much hanging stuff in the trees is going to get you. I either need a washer and dryer on site, a trip back home, or a trip to a laundromat, yeah. or just a a lot more clothing. Yeah. So, anyways, that's part of the game plan this year. Yep. Always. Uh, this guy in American history had a bull. This must be a colorized photo. Yeah, so this is an interesting photo. Well, you don't like talking about George Custer, do you? Yeah, he was... I Different. I I know who George Custer is. Some people say that the Battle of Little Bighorn is the most written about battle in military history. And I have read probably five books on the subject. And I am no fan of, of Custer. George Custer. Yeah. Okay? So don't take this the wrong way. 
I wasn't taking I it the wrong way. I am a fan of elk hunting. Yeah, no, and, no, no. I'd... And if you want to take the coward's way, like George Custer, hunt with a rifle. Yeah. That's all that's all I'm doing here. <laughs> no, there there was I'm not I'm not like I, I didn't take any offense to being here. I just I wasn't sure I didn't prepare myself on what to say and I just think uh Custer. Custer. Yeah. But, you know, I guess in a way I I guess it is connected to my brain because I'm like I hate doing things that glorify people who have been kind of yeah, bad with history, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't want like and this 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 comes from a, a case that I've talked to you about. Like I realized that I I needed to well, I realized that I was taking that position when I watched a show that had a murderer that was being interviewed for the show that's connected to our lives in Montana. Yeah. Because I remember when this I was watching the show about this guy whose wife and baby pat or disappeared and I kind of go, this sounds familiar, sounds familiar. And then it turned out this guy was from Helena and he, his, his wife and his kid were shoved in a barrel. Yeah. And it turns yeah. out that they were connected to us. And I, because yeah. I was like, that's why it's familiar. Because I remember when this happened. Yeah. I remember yeah. people I knew looking. And then yeah. I realized I just watched a TV show allow a murderer in prison glorify himself yeah. on a freaking TV show. Yeah. And I was kind of angry about it. Anyway, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> I know. I know. That's. It's you know it is what the world. Anyways, but you know George Custer proud of proud, uh, proud enough of himself to have a picture taken with a bull that he had downed. Yeah, so it was a big deal for a while. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, avalanche warnings, which is a good sign for water content here, but it's yeah, what goes up must come down, and flood warnings are also issued when so, these kinds of things uh, take the place. The average, I think, the average snowfall in the United States is like twenty eight inches a year. The average for Twin Falls, and I'm just ballparking here, is 18. Okay. The average for Sun Valley, 90 minutes away, is 105 inches. Okay. Per year. Nice. That's a substantial difference. So we got some we got some decent snow down here. Yeah. Like two inches, you know, an inch maybe. Yeah. But uh, the, it really comes down up there. And you talk about the mountains being steeper in Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. is an avalanche warning. Yeah. This really happens. There are there are signs. I used to work for a sign company here in Twin Falls, and they actually have to make warning avalanche ahead. Yeah. <laughs> because and and my wife and I, my wife and I went up to Sun Valley uh a few years back just to sp- spend the night and go shopping and you know have a have an extended date. And we we did a lot of driving around while we were up there. Okay. And one of the areas we drove around to was like, wow, there was like an avalanche here recently. Yeah. Wow. These homes haven't even been cleaned up. Wow. And it's and it was, it it wasn't from it wasn't from that year. It was this time of year. It was December, but it was clearly not the snow accumulation. So it had to have been like the year before. Okay. But I mean, wow. yeah, avalanches, and it's residential area. Yeah, I mean, this stuff I, still happens. That's the one thing about the Wood River Valley here in Idaho that I'm just unsettled about is is people are yeah. building these homes right next to these very steep, tall so mountains. So steep, so steep. I mean, it's like you have yeah. the wrong kind of situation, and it's bad. I mean, what, one of the things that concerns me is the fires that have happened up there recently. That vegetation and and long. Uh, long living vegetation has been burnt up, so those root systems are now no longer really holding the stuff in place. So how long until that stuff degrades to a point that the soil gives loose and the avalanche isn't snow, but right. it's a right. geological hazard. Yeah. So that yeah. kind of stuff is scary because there, there's two incidents in the United States. There's many, of course, but two that <laughs> two related to residential areas. I think the most recent one was in Washington State where an entire side of a mountain yeah. sloughed down in some heavy rains and covered... Uh, like uh, like half a mile of homes. Oh jeez. And it yeah. w- and then in San Diego, I think it was in 20 208 or something like that. Okay. Um there was a, a a a subdivision being put in and there was this father and son. This is a horrifying story. This father and son went down to the store and while they were gone, the mountain sloughed off and killed mom and, and sister oh, that's or something right. like that. Yeah, I and do remember was, that horrifying that's terrible yeah yeah anyway sorry last podcast just want to make okay, sure we keep yeah. it real you know just keep <laughs> <laughs> anyways avalanches are real <laughs> and it's a it's a sign of good snowfall that's really all i was trying to take away from it. I, did, I didn't want to talk about the devastation however i will say <laughs> the first place the first place i ever saw a bull elk 
killed, okay, was Avalanche Gulch. Oh, interesting. So, in the little belts in Montana. The first bull I ever saw killed was with you in that one situation, but I don't know where that was at. Oh, yeah. That was that was in the little belts. Little spike. That was in the little belts. Okay. On the backside of Canyon Ferry. Okay. Same place, man. Same right. place. Ah, yeah. Between Townsend and White Sulphur. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so the, to go back. I don't think I've been in a hunting party that's had uh, success with elk since. Yeah, that was a rifle hunt. That was yeah. You know, road hunting and ambush. That was. Yeah. I don't like. To, I don't want to talk about it either. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you, you thought you didn't have any grizzly conversations. This uh, sow grizzly and her cubs seen making their way up uh, headquarters. Yeah, ridge. yeah. Remember when I said uh, bears don't hibernate? Yeah. So I did talk about it. Oh, this one. <laughs> yeah, because it, the bears the, the bears don't hibernate. They just sleep. Right. And sometimes they get out and they're like, "Hey, I smell food." You know? Oh. Or it was like it was warm out. So I, you know, there was something I sensed in the temperature. I'm not sure, but so you know, sometimes it, people see bears and they're like, "I thought they were supposed to be hibernating." Well, that well, yeah, you know why? Cuz I actually just so <laughs> this is a weird aside. You really? Uh, this is a weird aside. <laughs> where, where that myth comes from in part. Yeah. I I have an assignment in a child and adolescent development class. I have clips uh, of cartoons, and I ask the students to observe the clips, put your parent hat on, uh, look for these kinds of themes in these clips. Of, are the cartoons violent? Are they doing gender roles? Are they doing all these different stuff? And are they the right kind of cartoon for young children? And one of my clips became unavailable this semester. So students did the assignment, and the clip was there, but in the last couple of weeks, somewhere one of my clips went away. Okay. So I replaced the clip just today with a new clip of Dora the Explorer. Okay. And a bear cub trying to get home before they take their hibernation nap. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah. it's sort of in, it's been ingrained in us since childhood that this is a situation yeah. with bears, but it's not necessarily accurate. Yeah. And so that door is full of crap. Yeah, that's right. You know what? Let's have a let's have a longer discussion about hibernation next year. Yeah, I mean, really look it up because let's talk about it after uh, I wake up. Yeah, I, I mean, really, because you know, plants <laughs> hibernate. Yeah, they kind of have to. Yeah, but animals, I don't, I don't, I don't know if any animals really hibernate. Squirrels don't. Yeah, right. There, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Hey, when it comes to non typical growth for antlers, uh. This this headline is confusing me because I yeah. don't understand the situation. This guy, it says here, this guy's going to be happy for the antlers to drop. And it's a, a little, uh, is that a, a muley? Yeah. A little yeah. mule a mule deer buck. And one of his antlers is, instead of being up, it's right here, yeah. like right down his face. Yeah. So is that something that happens early in the growth? Like they, they went to go under a, a fence line or they, they rubbed up against a tree or something and they, they warped the growth? Or is it genetic? And it's just the atypical growth that will grow like that every year. I don't know. If you look at that guy, it looks like the base of that antler isn't the same orientation as the base of the other antler. Yeah. It actually looks like it's coming right? in. Right? Yeah. Right? So maybe next year he'll just be a little bit bigger <laughs> and it'll stretch out <laughs> yeah. and and go around his head. Because yeah. there's, you know, there's some, there's some good, there's some really cool non-typicals out there. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah. So I, when I told you at you know year in review, after I got my bull, it's ten thirty three at night. I get pulled over at a game yeah. check station. <laughs> you did, I, and I have this great big non typical bull and non typical bull story. And I'm talking with game wardens who hear every story that come yeah. out of the hills. Yeah, and they were talking about how to look at that base and that orientation to see well why it, why did he grow like this? Because if the, my bull is the same. Okay. So there was something that happened in his year. Yeah. That 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 changed the growth. Okay. And so so it, something, it, yeah. So it's it, it's there there's a number of scenarios that could lead to that atypical growth. So in one case it could be the base. This looks like it's the base that it would just grow like that no matter what. Right. And so but in your bull's case, something happened after the after the fact that just changed the Yeah. Yeah, that's what it that's what it appears to me, 
And again, I had had a very long day when I had a discussion with those game wardens. <laughs> so, and they were throwing a lot of really cool information at me. I nice. wish I'd recorded the entire thing. Oh, wow. It was really cool because they talked about a lot of non-typical bulls being up there. Okay. So, so I was like, oh, well, so there's something, maybe there's something in the genetics and where they have, I mean, because he's perfect on one side. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It's, it's a shame Picture in a perfect. way. Yeah. I, I, I love him. I think he's, I think he's great. Yeah. I love the character. Anyway. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> My dumb, silly joke is making me laugh, and it's not even that funny of a joke. Cougar is bag another wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we just need some more so, sketches on what a wolf is. Then we can put that together. Yeah. I've so, seen all the sketches for the cougars. I, <laughs> I kind of pick up on that, what they're putting down. Yeah. Uh, they're, but, they're, they're into the young men with money. I think Wolf yeah. of Wall Street. That's what it would be. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, we, we talk a lot about predators, predator management, and lo and yeah. behold, I, I just... Predators uh, managing, man, managing predators. Yeah. yeah. Like, who to thunk? Yeah. Like, that's, that's kind of remarkable, really. Yeah. This was in Washington. So, yeah. So, yeah, really interesting. And is it, was it a territorial thing? Was it a, was it a meal thing? Yeah. Like, was it, you know, cause I think it was an opportunity thing. The The dog just didn't see the cat coming. Yeah. I, I, I cats just, are evil. Yeah. You're right. I think they're just, they're, <laughs> how many times you hear about people being followed by cats? We had a cat walk right in front of our tent. Dude, all I the mean, way around it. All yeah. the way around. There was tracks all the way around that tent. Yeah. And I know that's not the first time that's happened. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. A tent is enough of a barrier, folks. It really is. <laughs> I'm kind of glad we had the tent. It Plus really it was is. cold and it snowed that night. Although I did see some I did see some content already this year where a bear had kind of chewed a hole in the tent. Huh. Like curiosity. Chewed, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Meh. <laughs> just a couple more a couple more left and we, we actually just I didn't think we were gonna do an hour that quick. I thought we still had fifteen we're minutes. We're good. We're good. Uh four hundred and forty six uh and zero to eight inches. I don't know what that means. So yeah, it's a big bull. Yeah, just a big it's bull. It's a big bull. So the the I think Idaho's record, the 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 gal I know, she runs the uh, infusion center here in town. The uh, I don't know if I made that. If I made that connection, I told you there's a place to get an IV if you feel like you're, uh, if you feel like you're dehydrated. You can get oh, an IV. I didn't know that. She runs the infusion center. She's the one from the the CrossFit gym. Okay. Who got the bull that was like 438 points or whatever? Wow. 428 points. Anyway, this thing's ridiculous looking too. Huge, huge. And Pennsylvania, by the way. And in Pennsylvania, and in Pennsylvania, and I think with. Yeah, yeah, with that kind of the inches, the inches mean less to me. Yeah, the inches. The more I see, the more I see, the less they mean. Yeah, and and seeing guys and seeing guys out there in the in the wildest places with a with a stick trying to kill some of the biggest animals. That's what I. That's what I want to see. Yeah, that's what I want. So to see. anyway, uh, this last one is really to me because sometimes I just need to chat with somebody about my latest adventure and maybe cry on their shoulder about the bull I didn't have a chance to shoot. We all we all need that buddy, and so we all need that buddy. Mo- Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks has a clever way of saying, "Hey, come complete this survey." Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. So, um, and and of course, we know that it's Montana yeah. Fish, Wildlife, and Parks in every state. It's just that state's division of it. But I digress. That was our theme this year. I just wanted to make sure we ended. With yeah. That. <laughs> so well, and I, and I, you know the. Uh, the whole year in review. Ah, oh, frick! I forgot what I was saying. That's twice. It's been, it's, third, uh, you geez. got one more in yet? Third, I, third time. I told charm. you I'm just getting over the flu. Yeah, and that flu fog is real. Yeah, and it like, is. What was I doing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, no, you were saying that. Gosh, was oh the survey? The yeah. survey. Have your uh, voice. <laughs> have a voice and phone a friend. Um. And 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 that's that's what I want future episodes of the Elk Season podcast to be is for us 
to to be available to come and talk to people. Yeah. To go and actually have a conversation and and be a shoulder to cry on. Sure. Because I really do want to hear about the one that got away. Yeah, there was a lot of passion about that early on in the podcast for the first half, and then it kind of fizzled out. But, you know, having the right logistics in place, resources, the right kind of recording. So We'll get there. I think it would be great. Yeah, it, it, it feels good now, and we'll get there. And uh, and so I'm I'm looking forward to talking to. I love hunters, I love their stories. Every time I talk to somebody this week at the gym, he was one of the guys I, I shared my elk success with, and he goes, "Oh man, only one of my kids harvested. He harvested a doe with a rifle." And he goes, "But man, that doe was hanging up in the garage over Thanksgiving weekend." Yeah. You know what it feels like. You know how good it feels to have a, a wild animal hanging up on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's so cool. Like Uber, it's so cool. Uber nostalgic. It's like a foot of snow on Christmas morning. It's so good. It's so obvious. Like that's what that's what Thanksgiving is. Yeah. Right. Is is everything we've worked towards this whole year, and let's get together and, and, and share in the success and feast, before yeah. we hibernate. <laughs> and with that, we're going to hibernate for a few weeks ourselves. Well, we'll see you next year. Have a happy new year and a very merry Christmas. Be well, stay awesome. And uh, and check out check out any any elk stuff on YouTube. Any. It's worth it. It's all good. All right. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers.